Welcome to Lyons Township High School AP Physics. Uh, today I've got an example for you. We're going to shoot a projectile at an angle um, off of a, a building. Uh, if you watch the previous example, we did an example where uh, a projectile was launched horizontally. It was a book. And we launched a book off of Willis Tower. So uh, we're going to basically change it up slightly. We're going to take that same book, launch it with the same speed, but a different velocity, meaning I'm going to angle the launch of the book. And we're going to calculate several things about the path that the book takes as it flies through the air. So the data you're going to need is we got Will's Tower, which is 440 meters tall approximately. Here's the ground. Okay. We're going to take our book and we're going to launch it at an angle of 60 degrees above the horizontal. So its launch velocity, v naught, will be, in the, but in the previous problem we did 50 meters per second, and it's going to be at 60 degrees above the horizontal. And um, that book is going to follow a path, a parabolic path, so it'll look something like this, and it's going to strike the ground. So uh, the things that uh, I'm going to help you determine today is we're going to look at, at two parts of that path. We're going to look at the top of the path, and we're going to look at the total path. And it's basically you're doing two separate problems when you do that. So um, at the top of the path, we're going to find the time to the top. We'll call it t sub t. Okay? And we're going to find uh, the max height. Uh, that the, the book achieves. And the, what, what height we're going to find is how far, how high above the launch point it gets. Obviously, if you knew that number and you want to know how high up the ground it gets, you would just add the 440 to that number. So I'll, I'll mention that when we get there. For the entire path, I want to know the time in the air. So I'll call it T sub A. And I also want to know uh, delta x. Where does it land? How far away does it land? Okay. Now, by the way, if you did watch the last problem, the book landed about 474 meters away. So the last problem, we launched this thing horizontal, same speed, 50 meters per second, and the book landed 474 meters away. So now the question is, um, where do you think it's going to land now? Do you think it's going to land closer to the building? the same place it landed before, or further from the building. And again, I'll make a note, we are launching this thing at 60 degrees. Okay, so maybe you make a prediction real quick. Again, if we launched it, when we launched it horizontal, will this launch get us not as far, the same distance, or further than a horizontal launch? All right, so we'll figure it out and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, so, um, the first thing you need to do is write down your givens. And it's literally two sets of givens for each part of the problem. So the first part of the problem, we'll say, we'll figure out how long the book's in the air to get here and how high it gets above the launch point. So that's going to be its own problem, OK? So I'll do that over here. And I'm going to make a chart. We have horizontal quantities and vertical quantities. Horizontally, um, well, I don't know what Vx is, do I? I know what V is, but that's not Vx, nor is it Vy, because that's at an angle. However, we can find that really easily. So I'm going to redraw that little arrow right there. We know that's 50 meters per second, and we know it's at 60 degrees. So this is 60 degrees. OK. Um, well, I can find Vx. Vx is simply 50 cosine of 60. So that's 50 cosine of 60, which is going to give you 25 meters per second. And Vy is 50 sine of 60, which should give you 43.3 meters per second. So let's put those over here. So our Vx is 25 meters per second, and that will not change. So I'm not going to put a Vx naught or anything like that. I'm just going to put Vx it doesn't change. This Vy, on the other hand, is going to change. So I'm going to call that Vy naught. And that is 43.3 meters per second. Now that will um, change as the, the uh, book flies through the air. 
Other things I know, I know acceleration in the x direction is zero. There's no horizontal gravity. A sub y is gravity, which is negative 9.8 meters per second per second. Now, having said that, got to be real careful. Which way do you want positive to be? So I am going to use the coordinate system to the right is positive and up is positive. Okay. So having said that, gravity points down. Gravity is in the opposite direction of this, so I make that number negative. Okay. Um, now, there's one more given in this problem that's a really important given to write down. And it's not always completely apparent or clear. Okay. At the end of the, the path, now we're looking at here now, we're looking at when that book reaches the top of, the, of its path, the top of that parabola. There is something we know about its motion at that moment. Do you know what that thing that we know is? Do you know what it is? At that moment, it's only moving horizontally. It's going only to the right. It's not moving up or down. So Vy final is zero meters per second. Okay. Once you know that, the rest of this is really simple. Okay. So the hardest part of this problem is writing down the givens and especially that one. Okay. To find the time to get to the top. We'll use uh, Vy final equals Vy naught plus AT. We know that's zero. We know this is 43.3. We know A is negative 9.8 T. If you move this over to here, it becomes positive 9.8 T. Then you divide by 9.8. So T is going to be 43.3 divided by 9.8, which should be a little over four seconds. When you do that in the calculator, you get, I got 4.42 seconds. Okay, so that's how long it's in the air. So we've answered one of our four questions. How high does it go? Well, at that point, you have a couple options to find that max height. Now that you have time, you have all kinds of options. I will go ahead and use the delta y equals vy naught t plus one half a t squared. Okay, so if we do that. Um, this will become height. That's the height above the launch point. Vy naught is 43.3. Our time we just figured out 4.42 plus one half a is negative 9.8. That's important. 9.8. And then t squared, you got 4.42 squared. Okay. If you plug and chug those in your calculator, I got um, 95.7 meters approximately. 95.7 meters. Now again, that's the height above the launch point. If you wanted the height above the ground that it achieves, you would just add 440 to that. Okay. Now there are other ways you could have found that. Okay. You could have used Vy final squared equals Vy not squared plus 2a delta y. You know A is negative 9.8. You know this is 44.3. You know that's zero. So you could have found that too. You could have even, if you're really careful, you could have used um, delta Y equals Vy average times time. You could have even used that. Now you got to be careful. What's Vy average? Well, I know Vy naught is 43.3. I know Vy final is zero. What's the average of 43.3 and 0? Uh, that would be 21.65. So you would plug in a 21.65 there. You know your time is your 4.42 seconds. And if you multiply those out, you're going to get your 95.7 that way too. So there's three ways to do it. There's probably a fourth and a fifth way if I thought really hard about it. Just be careful with your signs. Okay. So um, we got the first two things. We now know how long it get, takes to get to here, and the max height above the launch point, and the max height above the ground that it achieves. Finally, how long is it in the air total, and how far does it get from the building, and does that, how does that compare to just shooting it horizontal? Okay. So um, I'm going to go ahead and erase this, and we're going to have a new set of givens. Now, I will leave the x alone, okay, because Vx is going to be 25 the whole time, the whole flight, and A in the x direction is going to be 0. I'll actually leave this alone too. And, and by the way, when you do these equations, when you use these equations, 
you got to pick your start point and your stop point. For this part of the problem, I'm going to start here and I'm going to end here. So my givens are going to go from here to here. Okay, so what do I know? Well, over here, I still know it's launched upward at 43.3 meters per second. I still know that while it's in the air, its acceleration is down at 9.8. VY final is not zero anymore. Okay, it's crashing into the ground. It's moving downward pretty darn fast. Okay, so I've got to find some other given. Well, what do you think? What's something else I know about the path from the beginning to the end? What's one more thing in the vertical direction that we know? Well, we know from the start to the finish, it falls downward a total of 440 meters. Now, be careful. We're not asking how far it travels. That's a different number. We just want to know what's delta y. What's the vertical height at the end compared to the vertical height at the launch? Well, the vertical height at the end is 440 meters below where it starts from. You don't care what happens in between. So delta y is negative, because it ends up below where it started, 440 meters. Okay, so now we know delta y. All right, so um, we now need to find time in delta x. Um, in order to find time, <laughs> There's a couple routes you could go here, okay? So you could use delta y equals vy naught t plus one half a t squared. You could use that. We have all these, all everything but time in that. So you would plug in negative 440 equals positive 43.3 t plus one half times negative 9.8 t squared. And that's fine. Now, the only issue with doing that as a mathematical issue is you've got a t and a t squared. You'd have to use the quadratic formula, which for most of us is okay. okay? Um, however, if you decide, you know what? I don't want to use the quadratic formula. There is a way around that. What we can do is, even though it doesn't ask for it, you can find vy final. How, how quickly downward is this thing traveling? So let's do that. Okay. So in order to do that, um, I'm going to use vy final squared equals vy not squared plus 2a delta y. Now here you're going to have to be careful with sine. Okay. So having said that, let's plug in what we know. Okay. Um, I'm trying to find vy final. I don't know that. It's squared equals vy naught, which is 43.3 squared plus 2. A is negative 9.8. Delta y is negative 440. I'll make a note here. Notice that this and this are both negative. When you multiply them out, the negatives drop out. So everything here is positive. You get the following. Vy final squared equals, and I got a big old number for you. When you plug those in your calculator, you get 10,499. Okay. Now, Vy final is the square root of that. Okay. If you square root that, you get 103. And that's going to be meters per second. Ha! Ah, there's one issue, though. You know how a moment, a little bit ago, I said, what's the square root of 4? And you hopefully answered plus or minus 2. Well, what's the square root of 10,499? Well, it's either plus or minus 103. Which one do you have to pick? The calculator ain't going to do it for us. Well, we know the book is traveling downward when it strikes the ground. Down is in the negative direction for our coordinate system. So we have to pick the negative, OK? If you don't do that, you're going to get a, a really crazy time, OK? Now to find time, I'll use vy final equals vy naught plus at. This is negative 103 equals 44.3 plus negative 9.8 time. Um, if you move this over to here, you get negative 147.3. Divide that by negative 9.8, you get a time of, I got 14.9 seconds. So the book is in the air. 
for 14.9 seconds total, okay? Which, by the way, is longer than if you launch it horizontally. When we launched it horizontally, it was only in the air for, um, what do we get for that? Uh, nine and a half seconds, roughly. So this is in the air much longer, okay? Where does it land? Well, for the x direction, delta x equals vxt plus one half at squared. Remember, a in the x direction is zero. There's no horizontal acceleration because the last time we checked, gravity points down. So you got delta x equals vx, which we figured out to be 25. And then we just got our time, 14.9. If you multiply those out, delta x ends up being 373 meters away. So almost a quarter mile away. On a side note, when we launched the book horizontal in the previous problem, the book made it to like 400 and something meters away, uh, 474. So this book is going to fall over 100 meters short of where it would have fallen if we just launched it horizontal at 50 meters per second. So as partially because we're aiming so far up that it doesn't have much of a horizontal velocity. So um, big takeaways from this, uh, there's a couple. One, decide what two points in the motion you're studying. For the first half of this problem, we went from here to there. Okay. For the second half of the problem, we went from here to here, identify those, those points that you're, establish, that you're trying to study. Secondly, write the givens down. So for instance, when the book went from here to here, there was a set of givens. When the book goes from here to here, it's a different set of givens. So you gotta basically redo the problem. Now there are some things you can reuse. So for instance, we know Vx and Vy naught were the same value in both parts of the problem because in both parts of the problem, I started from here, okay? Um, but really focus on identifying the two spots in the motion you'd like to study and what you know about those two spots. Um, I hope that was helpful, and uh, thank you very much.